hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. No problem, thank you very much. You're welcome, mate. No, I, th I think we believe in him, we think he's got something. Getting a conversation out of him, you'd have to nip him to get a sound out of him. You don't actually 100% believe it, but you think, maybe. Every now and again I'd look and I'd think, yeah, he seems to be developing to something what I never thought he would. He didn't shy away from anybody, fight anybody, he fought the best out there. I remember when the crook would actually fight with me, I kind of like, is he ready for this one? When Clinton fought him, I thought, it's not going to be a, 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 an easy night for Clinton, this is going to be a tough, tough night. That guy was a dangerous fighter. But a massive puncher. You've got to believe that you can beat this guy. After all, he's only a human being. You know, he's got two arms, two legs. Shout him, tell him Clinton watches here. Flying the flag for Sheffield. Clinton from Sheffield, rocking it in the States. I said, Roy! Clinton Woods is here. I always like it when fighters look confident when they walk into the ring. So, yeah, 10 out of 10 for Clinton for looking confident. What do you want him to do? Walk to the ring with his knees knocking on his head. He's not going to do that. But that's not Clinton's style. And I thought, that's a shame. I thought that that's not Clinton Woods is not going to be the same after this fight. And people were thinking, you know, oh God, here we go. But what did he do? Like Clinton always does. Big heart, got himself back up. So it was something out like I had a rocky movie. Like, like I said, I told you, and again, what another tough fight. Tough fights, all of them were tough fights. To, to have the courage, to have the bottle, uh, to get between them ropes and stand in that ring and, and look at your opponent across that ring and think, you know, we're gonna we're gonna punch each other tonight and uh, whoever's standing at the, the end or whoever's landed more punches is gonna be the winner. Clinton said, uh, I fought the rest, beat the rest, and now I want to find the best and be the best. You'd always turn up. He was a tough one, he'd always turn up. I always thought I'd end up living in a, a caravan in Shef uh, on the outskirts of Sheffield somewhere. I believe that I uh, represented Sheffield when I boxed. in the small old shows and there were a place in Sheffield called um, the Pine Grove Club. It was small old shows and I thought me boxing I thought I'd win a few, lose a few, win a few, lose a few. Um, the trainer used to always tell people he's going to be British champion and he's feeling embarrassed. He said stop saying that, stop saying that and uh, I just kept on winning. You have to, you have to try and find some, something inside you. I agree what nobody, I don't think anybody expected it, I don't care what anybody says, nobody expected it. Um, I think it, it's, it's a good story. Let's get ready to rumble! You were the biggest name in boxing. Um, the biggest name, who was the number of the number City of the one. UK, he's the pride of Sheffield. He was actually more open for Alan Jameson. So we could play, we could play ring him now and make a fight. Uh, what did he get for that? In the bag, they got 20 grand for that. You do earn millions in boxing at the top level, but you get millions took off you. I can remember thinking, thinking to myself in the fight, you've got a man there. The best feeling in boxing is when someone's been giving you a bit of a feeling. And then as the round started going on, you start getting closer and closer. And then you start hitting them and you start hurting them. You could punch so hard, tough fire. We had no one coming, only out of the box. I saw a big change in Johnson, a big change. Change. I'm not saying I weren't scared, because I were scared, you were terrifying, knowing you're going to jump in a fight. 
Ja, jeg er jo ikke tager det, det er så sjovt, men det er det. Jeg tror, man For mig er det bare, jeg skal på lærer. Så er det far her, der går til ringen, og nu går det ned i rummet. Så det er nok inden, jeg sagde, jeg kan ikke tage det, jeg var mere embarrassed. Vi træner never even kun til at change room after the fight. Så min wife will never forget that. If it was my wife, I would have achieved nothing. You know what they say, the only great man is always a great woman. Yeah, totally agree with that. Yeah. If I lost that fight, that would have been it. I don't think any, any fight from the planet would have been that fight. I could hear the crowd from the team, I could hear the crowd over the side to that fight. I don't know what area it's been in. One of the nicest men you'll ever meet. Not many of you told me you're a world champion. It's, it's a man road, isn't it? Everything just clicked. Everything went right, everything went to plan. Um, it was a tremendous feeling just to be champion of the world. I always, I always remember in America, and this was one guy since we've seen, God, the skinny boy from Sheffield's doing well, aren't he? Ryan Rhodes once said that uh, you get in that ring and you look at your opponent knowing you're going to punch each other. And uh, whoever stands at end, throwing most punches, usually wins. Now, it's a, it's, it's a feeling of, I can explain it. It's like being a warrior, isn't it? Now, the reason I've done this video is I don't think Clinton Woods gets as much respect for what he's done in boxing. Probably because he's a quiet kid, Clinton. You know, he's not he's not one of them guys that you see stumbling out of nightclubs with dolly birds and stuff like that. He's married, isn't he? But uh Clinton probably did all that when he when he when he were before he before he turned pro. But he uh if you look at his record, his record is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Obviously, he uh he turned pro uh, in nineties, Clinton, and he obviously he went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's have a look. He got beat against Dave Starr. He probably had about twenty fights then, round about that. Fought Dave Starr at Commonwealth at, Su at Super Middle. Got beat on points. Stepped up. And um, within a couple of fights, he's fighting Crawford Ashley now. Crawford Ashley, British Commonwealth, European champion. He'd had two cracks at the world title at light heavyweight. Massive, massive puncher. He broke Clinton's nose. Now, the point I'm trying to make is there's a defining fight in people's careers that gets them into the mix for a world title. Now, the fight that changed Clinton's life, right, he lost it against Roy Jones, but to get it in there, we're talking about smart moves. British Commonwealth European champion beat Crawford Astley, broke, him in, broke his will. The bully got bullied. Now, that's where Clinton went to another level, that fight. You know, he, had a, he fought Ula Clementson as well. You know, not long after that. But you just got to go through his record. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. After he beat Crawford Ashley, it was just a case of putting... Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He put eight wins together after Crawford Ashley and then jumped in there with Roy Jones, who were pound for pound number one in the world. How many fighters in England can say they fought the pound for pound Number one guy in the world. Ricky Hatton fought Mayweather. Fritch fought Ward. There's not many, is there, that can say that, is there? Henry Cooper fought Ali. Not many can say they've fought the best. But after the Dennis Fruit toweling against Roy Jones, people were probably going to say that he was spent. He came back, didn't he? He drew against Glenn Johnson. He lost against Glenn Johnson. 
He then beat Jason Delisle. Then he then he's got him back in for vacant IBF world title. Rico Oyo, they said we're going to be the next big thing. Clinton stopped him. Stop Rico Oy. Julio Cesar Gonzalez, 38 and 2, beat him on points. Then rematched Jason Delisle, stopped him. Then he then he got his third one with Glenn Johnson. Split decision. That would have wore that. They just went toe to toe. Then he fought Gonzalez again. Beat him on points. You know, after that, then it was Tarver. He got beat against Tarver. We all saw that. Clinton didn't travel very good. Came back with a winning jersey, then lost to Cloud. Now, from Roy Jones up to Tarver is Cloud, that's seven years fighting at world level. And that goes under radar. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because he's not hanging out the back of people in boxing. He's just a tough kid. That uh, we, he's got a family and he, 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 like, he, he likes to do a bit of training and that's it, family man, isn't he? He's not hanging out at back of people and you know pulling Mosey there and everywhere and backstabbing and blah de blah. You know he, he's not that type of person, but his career, his career doesn't get the credit it deserves. But for me, the defining fight. Weren't a world title, it was a Crawford Ashley fight. So, if you're an hardcore boxing fan, sit down, it's about 35 minutes from beginning to end, watch the build up and then the end bit. Clinton Woods against Crawford Ashley. Just put Ashley versus Woods YouTube into your, into your computers and watch that fight. Now, that fight is what put Clinton on road to stardom. That fight, uh. And there's been there's been a few stars from Sheffield over the years, but Clinton, like I said, he's a cult hero in his area. Cult hero that doesn't get the credit he deserves. Now, Dennis deserves respect for getting him there, but Clinton's the one taking the punches, and he deserves the most respect. Now, obviously, there's a lot of people dined out on uh on, on the, the Clinton Woods success. Some some justifies, some not, but if you want to watch some good fights, go and watch his fights with Glenn Johnson. But for me, the defining fight which put him out there was the Crawford Ashley one because I remember the fight and I thought, he'll get beat here. He'll get beat, Clinton. Here. It's too much for him. Crawford Ashley was a cruiserweight boiled down to light heavy. Cruiserweight we've been in with Michael Nunn, Virgil Hill. Massive, massive puncher, massive. Six foot three and a half, six foot four, massive, massive man. Look at Clinton in ring with him. He looked like a middleweight next to him. But go and watch Ashley versus Woods. All right? So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. All right? Shout out to Weak Wellens. Steve Weak Wellins on Boxing Asylum. Weak questions them that you asked Richard Poxon. Very, very weak, Steve. You were starstruck, mate. Bit embarrassing to listen to, but I'm gonna have to take your hardcore badge off you, Steve. I'm afraid you've gone back down to full-on casual like Smido. Shout out Innovation Alloys as well, AJ Obson. <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking.